<laughs> Hi amigas. Okay, so I'm making this video for all of my Mac users that are using a StarCraft solo or that are wanting to learn how to print and cut and set up everything on their solo create software for the first time. Keep in mind, I am using a Mac. This video is only for Mac users. I have also now made the video for Windows users, English and Spanish and Mac and Spanish as well. So if anybody wants to recommend this video to anybody else, go ahead and share the other videos. They should be up on my YouTube channel by now. And today is December 13th. So this is the newest update for our Mac users. Now, if you guys are watching this in the future and something looks a little off, just keep in mind that it's probably an update that has happened by that point. And I will hope to have updated videos like this within the months as they go by and as I see updates and major changes, okay? So in order to make sure you're on the most up-to-date version, I'm going to share my screen. Um, you can just go to StarCraft Create. If you're using a Mac, you want to be right now, you want to be on the version 1.021. These are not automatic updates. These are done through um, StarCraft themselves. They You either could go to StarCraftVinyl.com, but I highly recommend going to a blog page that I found information that is a lot more app updated, <laughs> I should say. And also, let's see, new window that is much updated faster and it's a lot more accurate so this is the blog page right here this is sandy mccauley she is the blog person behind this blog of starcraft solo and create support she has this page with lots of help manuals and lots of shortcuts and tips of the day terminology sheets so if you guys ever feel the need to come check out this page to find any of those updates definitely do so you will find lots of information here. Also, I will recommend the four Facebook groups down here to add all four because if you guys ever have questions on anything as far as StarCraft or the solo in general, you guys can post your questions here once you guys join the groups and one of the admins will get back to you and will get those questions answered. I can also help to an extent. I'm not like 100% knowledgeable, but I know for the most part print and cut. Okay, so in order to check that you're on the most up-to-date version, of course, once you open up Create, it will tell you what version you're on, or you can go to About StarCraft, Help About StarCraft Create at the very top, and you should find it. Um, to view the updates, you want to go to Section 3, which is this one, and we are going to find a Mac version. This is a Google Drive, which you do have to log in through, I guess, to be able to find the update. So double-click on Mac version, and then this one, the middle one, will say newest Mac create update and that's the 1.021. I'm not going to download it, but you would follow the steps if you needed to um, because I already have the newest update already to go. So I'm not going to do that. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back to create, which is this one, and we're going to start a new project. Now, keep in mind that this is different from Cricut or Silhouette. Maybe you do have to label your um, projects as soon as you're going into it. Um, or you can leave them as untitled, whatever you prefer. Another thing is that anytime that you're going in to start and do a mat size, you want to make sure and you remember that your mat size is technically your media size. So depending on what size paper or vinyl you're using to print and cut, that's the one that you want to be using whenever you hit mat size, okay? So I'm going to do 11 by 13 width and height and hit okay. And then here automatically you see that my registration marks and my print margins are on but they are not matching the um, paper size because I have an 11 by 13 paper as my mat size, but the registration marks and everything looks like it's adapted to an eight and a half by 11 um, sheet of paper. So therefore we need to just turn on and turn off some things. So I'm gonna turn these off for now. Usually you would need these on, uh, but you're also gonna go to cutter at the top, cutter settings. And you want to make sure that this is matching. So as of today, this is what you would choose. 0 0.500 centimeters. You can pause if you need to see this. Mark thickness, 1.000 millimeters. And then you want to make sure your mark inset from print bounds and not around the design or page bounds, okay? And then also um, this bottom number to be matching the top, which is 0 0.500 centimeters. And I'm going to hit okay. Now, I am going to go ahead and turn on print margins and registration marks. 
once that works and it's good to go, you should be good to move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and do the next one. Okay, Amiga. So now for the next step, what we want to do after we go ahead and did our cutter settings, we want to make sure our print margins and our registration marks are matching up with our paper size. So the next thing you want to do anytime you're choosing a new paper size or media size, whatever you want to call it, you want to always go to file page setup. It's very important to make sure your mat size and your paper size right here is matching exactly the same. So you're going to go in and choose your printer of choice. I'm doing my EcoSolvent 15,000 printer. And then my paper size, you want to choose a size that's already generated with your printer. And if you don't see something that you're like, well, that's not the size I'm using, you're always going to go to manage custom settings on your Mac. And once you do, you want to type in manually width and then the height. Okay. For me, I'm doing the 11 by 13. So I already made a preset here. If you want to make another preset, you can just hit the plus button and then type in what you want. I'm just going to go with 11 with 13 height and then I'll hit OK. So now it detects it as a custom size, which is Epson printer 11 by 13. So now when I hit OK, you can see how automatically my registration marks and this little print border already adapts around the paper. So let's just say for an example, now I'm ready to go ahead and insert my image. Keep in mind whenever you guys are importing your images, you want to import as a PNG file. A PNG file is a um, design or an image that has no background. So it has a transparent background. So that's technically what you want. That way it only cuts around the silhouette of the design. If you want to learn how to clean up an image, it's not easy, but I can definitely do it in another video. I don't want to go too far in that hole because then we'll end up somewhere else, but you'll just hit import. And then once you hit import, you'll bring in the image and then hit open. So once you do that, it will automatically bring in your image here. So when you move it, drag it from side to side, you can see the cut lines and that's what you want because that's where exactly you want it cut around. Okay, so if you want to make it bigger, there's two ways to do it. You can hit shift with your left hand on your keyboard, hit shift, and then you can grab these little arrows and stretch it out at the same time and then you can move it out so that way it's proportioned if you don't actually hit shift and you just stretch this it's going to be warped it's not going to be proportioned anymore so you don't want that so you need to make sure if unless you're okay with stretching it just a tad bit down you need to make sure you're hitting shift at the same time or you can go to the position and size panel which is the second one down it's not the first but the second and then you'll find the position and size panel and you can resize from here so you can do like 10 um, 10.2, 10.3, whatever you think is best. Just keep in mind since your paper is 11 width, it needs to be anything below 11 for it to work. <laughs> and also because your print margins are there. So it needs to be able to fit inside. So now that I grab this and you can see, we are good to go now. If we wanted to go in and create and print and cut we would go to create but I wanted to show you a little bonus thing if you want to go also and go to file instead of having to wait after you're done to one project you can actually go to file new project and start a new one on a different little tab at the same time if you're wanting to get like multiple images done so you can do 11 by 13 or another let's say eight and a half by um, 11 and then label your project and then open up another tab, which is up here. And this is a completely different project. So it's not going to interfere with your first one. But what you will notice is that your print border, your page setup is a little bit off because now you said that you had a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and your print border and margins don't match. So now again, what you would have to do every single time and it's tedious, but you will have to go to file page setup epson printer and then now you're going to do eight and a half by 11 or just use the u.s letter which is already made so you don't have to go in and do all that and then here is your um border and now it's adjusted so if we go back to the first project again it's not matching so every single time you kind of have to move that page set up back and forth for every page but this is just a helpful tip to be able to open up different tabs to open up different projects and have them all printed all at the same time. So it's definitely a bonus if you want to try and do that. 
and then we'll just import the image and then hit open and then bring in your other image. So it's just up to you. So now that we have this eight and a half by 11, now we'll kind of just go based off this one. That's fine for teaching purposes. And then we'll go to create. Now we're on our um, screen here where it says cut by color. So you won't mess with anything here. You're going to say that you want to use software speed and force because you technically do want to use your speed and force from your machine, but you don't want to do anything with this main screen here because this is not your print plus cut screen. So once we are ready to go to print plus cut, you'll go down there and then go to print. And this is where you want to pay attention to because these are the settings that I'm going to be using for my Epson EcoTank EcoSolvent prints or my sublimation prints. They're similar, it's just one thing that changes. So we're going to drop down here because I know a lot of you guys are like, I don't see the additional settings. You do see them, you just have to drop down and do print settings. And then we're gonna do cassette tray or rear feeder. If it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet, it's a cassette tray, it's fine for your 15,000 printer. If it's bigger, you need to do your tray. And then your paper type for equal solvent and sublimation, I like to do Epson matte for Mac users and then best quality if it gives it to you. Sometimes when you're doing like a random size like the 11 by 13, Print quality is not available. Won't let you do any bigger or every any nicer quality. And then here, the mirror will only stay on if you're. This is for sublimation, but if not, then just don't turn it on. You don't need it. And then we're gonna do color options. And then we're gonna go here to where it says advanced settings and mode is Adobe RGB two point two gamma. Now, if you feel like your blue or your yellows or your contrast or brightness needs to be fixed. You can always mess with these numbers. I don't mess with nothing because technically mine are perfect as to where they're at. But I know some people have issues with that and they like to mess with it. And that's completely up to you. I just have it at zero. Again, whenever you print from a Mac, and this is really weird, but I'm going to say it. Whenever you print from a Mac, it's completely different as your quality, how it comes out when you print from a Windows a lot of the time I've had had people tell me that they like the colors, how pr it prints better from a Windows computer than a Mac. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the drivers. I don't know what it could be, but I have both. And you can obviously tell a difference when I'm printing for Equisolvent. Then you would just hit print. For the purpose of this, I'm not hitting print because I don't want to print anything. But if you guys need to check out a video of how I print and cut from start to finish, please check out one of the videos up here. I can't remember if it's this little tab here or here, but it will show up a video of how I print and cut from start to finish. It's an English video. So you guys will be able to see the process of how I put it into my solo, how I cut and I do everything. Once you do have it on a mat or you printed it out, you wanna put it on your mat on the bottom right-hand corner. So this is my right side. This is bottom right here. You wanna line it up to that bottom right side. You want to make sure it's perfect. And whenever you do print the registration marks, your blade carrier, will sit over top of that bottom right registration mark. And that's where you'll start scan. So once you do that, you'll just hit start scan here. And then it would scan one registration mark, two, three, and four. And then it will start to cut around the shape of the design. Like you can see here, our design there. Okay, that's how it's going to cut. So um, I hope this video is helpful for you guys that are wanting to really get into the whole um, equal solvent printing or just printing and cutting with your solo in general, because I feel like the majority of the part people have the equal uh, solo cutting machines because of equal solvent. But if you're wanting just to use it as your first ever cutting machine and you want to learn how to print and cut, this is a tutorial for you if you're a Mac user. I have the Windows version um, and Spanish version for Mac and Windows on my page already. So go check it out and subscribe to my channel. So this is it. If you guys have any additional questions, comments, concerns, please email me or drop a comment down below and I will get to you as soon as I can. Bye, amigas. Have a nice day.